welcome to this video on the crash course series in this video we are going to cover electric and hybrid cars my name is Harun Janadi and on this channel synergy files we help to inspire budding technologists to progress for a better more sustainable world what will you gain out of this video course well this course will aim to answer most of the questions you have about electric cars. It is particularly beneficial for someone looking to buy an electric vehicle. It will help you manage expectations and will also aid you in making the right choices. It will also bring you up to speed with where the electric car industry is heading and most importantly what lies in the future for electric vehicles. So, if you want to learn about electric and hybrid cars, this is the right place. All the notes for the course will be available for you to download from a link that will be provided at the end of the course. Let's have a quick look on the course contents. We will firstly look at what are electric cars and what are the different types of electric cars. We will then look at the history of electric vehicles. We will later focus on the benefits of using electric vehicles. In the next section after that, we will look at engineering and technical details which will include electric motors, battery pack, motor controllers and chargers. Next we will focus on some of the problems we have uh, with electric cars and lastly we will look at the future of the EV industry. Module 1, what are electric cars and what are the different types? Well, by definition, an electric car is a vehicle that is propelled by one or more electric motors. There are at least four different types of electric cars. Let's have a look at what they are. The first category is the pure EV. As you can guess, the pure EV doesn't have an IC engine, it is only electric drive and the battery pack size is large, that is 20 to 80 kilowatt hour. Examples in this category are Nissan Leaf and Tesla Model S. Pure EV occupies 61% of the EV market. They are the largest chunk. The second type of electric car is the hybrid electric vehicle. A hybrid, as you can guess, has an engine and an electric motor. The batteries get charged by the engine. They cannot be charged externally. The battery pack size is medium, 6 to 12 kilowatt hours. An example in this category is the Honda Civic Hybrid. The third type of electric vehicle is a PHEV or PHEV or the plug-in hybrid vehicle. It has an IC engine and an electric motor. The batteries can be charged from an external source through a plug. The battery pack size is medium, 6 to 12 kilowatt hours example in this category is BMW i8 and the last category is the MHEV or the mild hybrid vehicle it has an IC engine and electric motor it turns off the engine and switches off to the electric motor when coasting braking and restarting quickly it cannot be solely driven on the electric motor because the electric motor used in a MHEV is very small and the example in this category is Chevrolet Silverado Hybrid. We would also like to mention another subcategory within the pure EV and that is of the range extended vehicle. The range extended vehicle has an internal combustion engine but that internal combustion engine is not connected to the drivetrain. It is only there acting as an electric generator so you can feed petrol to it and all it does is it will top up the batteries when the charge is running low. The example of range extended vehicle is the BMW i3. Section 2 History of Electric Cars Contrary to the popular belief, electric cars have existed even before the internal combustion engine cars came along. A very historic and well-known car is that of Thomas Parker that was built in 1884. However, the battery technology at the time could not match the richness of energy that fossil fuels provided. Electric cars got reduced in their role as milk floats, space vehicles, bumper cars, and then golf buggies. In the 1990s, pressure from environmentalists 
push the automotive industry towards the production of low emission and fuel efficient vehicles. The idea of noiseless and emissionless electric cars was, was put on the table. At the time, the automobile manufacturers in the US approached the idea with skepticism. On the other hand, Japanese manufacturer Toyota successfully rolled out the world's first mass-produced hybrid car in the form of Prius. It should be noted that GM in the US also brought forward the EV1 in the 1990s. The car was received warmly, however GM itself pulled the plug on the program which sparked an angry response from the customers and resulted in a loss of reputation. A documentary, Who Killed the Electric Car, on this controversy was made by Sony Pictures. It covered the reasons behind the controversial move. Students are advised to watch the documentary in their spare time. It was almost a decade later after the Tesla Roadster was introduced that the idea of an all-electric car became a reality. The Roadster was aided by a step change in battery technology, that is, the arrival of lithium-ion batteries. Several manufacturers started following suit. Even in the late 2000s, more than 80% of the electric cars on the road were DIY projects, that is, people converting their existing petrol or diesel car into an electric drive. The engine would be replaced by a motor and the fuel tank and the trunk space would be utilized to fill up batteries. The rise in the demand for low-priced electric cars on the back of Kyoto Protocol gave opportunity to several small-scale manufacturers to enter the EV market. This included manufacturers from China and India. Today, nearly all mainstream car manufacturers are designing electric cars. It has been suggested that a tipping point is near when electric car production would become cheaper than conventional cars. Section 3. What are the main benefits of using electric cars? Electric cars are extremely efficient. Compared to conventional IC engine cars where less than 15% of the energy in the fuel translates into physical movement, in an electric car up to 90% of the energy in the batteries can be converted into movement. This means that electric cars can be 6 times efficient and in most cases are also 3 to 4 times cheaper to run. Just to put this into perspective, a petrol car normally has an economy of 14 cents per mile. Electric cars on the other hand have an economy of 3 to 4 cents per mile. Electric cars are also environmentally friendly. If powered by renewable energy, they have zero emissions. Scientists have suggested that even if EVs are powered by electricity from a coal-fired power plant, they can still be better in environmental terms because of their high efficiency. Some scientists criticize electric cars and suggest that they only shift the emissions to the point of electricity generation. A term called the long tailpipe is used in reference to this thesis. Nonetheless, electric vehicles have literally helped to clear the air in many congested city centers. One must remember that in an electric car, the engine does not need to run when the vehicle is stationary. Furthermore, electric cars have the capability of recouping the kinetic energy. In a normal car, a huge amount of energy is lost as heat on the brakes. In an electric car, much of this energy can be recycled to recharge the batteries. Electric cars can also charge the batteries when going down a slope in a hilly area. For island communities, electric vehicles are ideal. They can be charged from a local renewable resource like a wind turbine and this frees up the island communities from reliance on diesel imports. An electric car has far lesser moving components. A motor is a very simple device compared to an IC engine Therefore, the reliability of an electric car is very high because there are lesser components at the risk of wear and tear and hence breaking down. Section 4 Engineering and Technical Details 
The range of electric car is heavily tied to the battery energy density. Lithium-ion technology has allowed electric cars to have a range greater than 200 miles, thus shattering the range anxiety that had kept the technology down. Most electric cars have also a low coefficient of drag which makes them go the extra miles. The Tesla Model S for example has a coefficient of drag of 0.24. Initially it was thought that to cut the development cost existing chassis of conventional cars should be used for developing EVs. The cavity for the petrol tank and the car boot space was to provide space for the batteries. However, having a bespoke platform has really helped in lifting the electric cars and in fact it has given it superiority over conventional cars. The battery pack in the modern electric car is not a separable attachment. It is an integral structural member of the car and adds stiffness to the frame. This approach has also freed up space and has allowed more batteries to be accommodated. The Tesla Model S for example has a variant that has a battery pack of around 100 kWh capacity. It should be noted that batteries cannot charge when the cell temperature goes beyond the range of 0 to 45 degrees centigrade. So when the battery is too cold or too hot, charging the battery leads to excessive heat generation that has the potential to permanently damage the cells. Therefore, an active cooling system is always beneficial and allows the car to cope with high ambient temperatures. Now we will cover the three components of electric cars, namely electric motor, the battery pack and the motor controller. Electric motors. The first EVs to appear on the scene had a DC motor. With a DC motor, the advantage was that no conversion was required from the battery current which was also DC. Therefore, the DC motor eliminated the need of an inverter. The other advantage of DC drive is the extreme amount of torque that the motor furnishes when a car is driving off. In a drag race, it is impossible to beat a car with DC motors. The disadvantage, however, of a DC drive is that at high RPM, the torque drops. So electric cars that had a DC motor struggled when climbing uphill even at moderate speeds. Earlier models of GWIS had a DC drive which was later replaced by an AC motor. Incorporating AC motor is more complex in terms of circuitry, however it has huge benefits. While torque may not be as high as a DC motor of a similar size, but an AC motor retains its torque levels even at high RPM. All modern EVs have AC motors. It should be noted that electric cars are available with one, two or even four electric motors. The battery pack. The battery pack is the most critical component and the most expensive component of an EV. In the past, electric cars have used lead acid and nickel metal hydride batteries. Modern EVs utilize lithium ion batteries that have a much higher energy density than lead acid. A battery pack is not just a bunch of batteries lumped together but a much engineered apparatus. Lithium ion batteries are often easily penetrable and therefore the pack must be designed such that there is no ingress. The pack should also provide safe venting of gases in case of thermal runaway and the pack should have a capable thermal management system that can both cool and heat the batteries when needed. There are several battery chemistries within the lithium ion umbrella and there are also several configurations of batteries, power cells, cylindrical cells, prismatic cells, etc. A battery pack can be extremely varied. In some cases, it may have several dozen large cells or it may have several thousand small cells. The cooling system of the battery pack can be active or passive. Within active systems, there are liquid and air cool options. High performance EVs always use a liquid cooling system because of its effectiveness. The battery is controlled by a battery management system or the BMS. The BMS is an electronic system that makes decisions regarding batteries, 
charging and discharging based on battery's temperature and the state of charge. It protects the battery from overcharging or undercharging. It also helps in stabilizing the battery temperature by regulating the coolant flow. It can also disconnect and isolate the battery pack altogether for safety reasons. The motor controller. The motor controller is essentially the brain of the whole EV. It is a three-way interface between human input, the motor and the battery pack. The motor controller takes the input from the driver through the gas pedal and converts it into signals for the BMS. It also controls the electric motor. It supplies more current to the motor when more torque is required and increases the voltage across the motor when high RPM is required. Likewise, it turns on and off the regenerative system when needed. Charging of the battery. One can install home charging points. In many countries, the energy supplier will provide you with home charging station at a small price. The maximum power for home-based charger is limited. For instance, in the UK, chargers cannot exceed more than 13 kilowatts. The higher the power rating of a charger, the quicker the batteries will charge. Commercial charging points are also available in many town centers, shopping areas, office car parks and services. Commercial charging points can be up to 50 kilowatts or even more. Tesla for instance has superchargers that have a power rating of 120 kilowatts. It should be noted that charging is an asymptotic process. In other words, from 10% charge to 80% charge of the batteries, it takes 50% of the time, while topping up the remaining 20%, that is bringing the charge from 80% to 100% charge, may also require the same amount of time. Section 5. What are the disadvantages of an electric car? Electric cars perform their best in moderate climates. It is therefore no surprise that they sell the most in places with mild weather like San Francisco. In extreme climates, there are drawbacks. Firstly, the energy that goes into cabin climate control reduces the overall range. For example, people living in hot places like Arizona have reported a loss in range. The second disadvantage is that compared to conventional cars, electric cars infrastructure is not as developed. Charging points are far and few between. Although they are growing at a much faster rate, nonetheless it will take time before they become comparable to conventional car services. Similarly, mechanics that deal with electric cars are very few. If the car breaks down, it has to be taken to a dealership and not to a private carriage. Section 6 Future of Electric Car It should be noted that lithium sulfur batteries are being tested at present. They have far more superior energy density compared to lithium ion. Lithium sulfur batteries can also be produced at a much cheaper cost. Therefore, this technology when it matures will give a shot in the arm to the EV industry. Kyoto Protocol has also helped the electric car industry to evolve. In the future, it is certain that there will be more driverless electric pods on the road. The number of charging points is increasing every single day. The battery price has already dropped to $150 per kilowatt hour. It has been reported that once the price drops below $100 per kilowatt hour, that will prove to be a tipping point, that is the point where electric car demand will surpass the conventional car demand. And with this, the course on electric and hybrid cars is concluded. Congratulations on completing the course. The link in the description will take you to the quiz and the ebook. If you did like this video, then please subscribe to our channel and please share it with your friends. Thank you for your attention.